And today, once again, I'm addressing you on the ongoing issues, COVID-related, but uh, today I really just wanted to take this opportunity to reflect with you the state of our economy. And uh, before I do so, I'd like to make uh, a quick observation, because whenever we talk about our economy, as government, normally what we do is just bombard you with figures and statistics without a human face. Yet behind these figures are real men and women, children, who are struggling. The hard-working farmer who mixes his sweat with the soil in order to feed his or her family, but also to feed our communities. The diligent mother who has a double role of nurturing her family while at the same time maintaining a full-time job. And also the aspiring and driven young people in our country who have hopes and dreams for a better tomorrow. But when we give you uh, economic figures, you never really see the face of these ordinary Kenyans. And today, I want to paint a picture of these Kenyans. The coronavirus pandemic has and will continue to undermine our efforts to revitalize our economy for the unforeseeable future. Indeed, it is true, as I have said before, that the rate of infections may indeed surge upwards or fall if we fail to comply with the protocols issued by the Ministry of Health. It is my prayer that we shall see the rate of infection fall because Kenyans will comply. But we must always recognize the possibility of an increase if we do not do that which is necessary. Indeed, as of this morning, I have been informed that we have cumulatively tested 57,650 samples, out of which 1,192 persons have tested positive for the coronavirus disease. And in the process, we have lost 50 of our fellow Kenyans who have fallen to this disease. Because also of the impact of this uh, pandemic, it has also had a negative impact on our economy. And there are many Kenyans who have been stripped of their dignity, cannot feed their families or pay their rent. And many of these Kenyans find themselves in very vulnerable and difficult situations. And that is why, as a government, we have been trying to do everything we can within the resources available to see how we can support these vulnerable Kenyans. That is why every single week my administration has been dispatching a total of 250 million shillings to vulnerable families. Many may ask why we have chosen to directly send money to these vulnerable groups and this has been motivated by two key reasons one in the past if a family couldn't feed itself because of floods famine or other such natural calamities we rushed previously to give them food aid take food in bags rice maize oils but then what we got to understand is that what happened was that government would get suppliers, we would give them the resources to buy the food, we would arrange the logistics of distributing the food to those in need. But unfortunately with this method, what we have discovered over time is that we lost almost half of these resources that we gave to relief suppliers 
we lost almost half of this to brokers and those who are organizing logistics. So therefore, very little of the resource actually reached, reached the intended target groups. So therefore, we had to change this method, change this method by taking advantage of increased technology which is now available in Kenya. And we have now changed the mode of delivery and replaced it with one where money through M-Pesa is directly sent to families. And through this process, we have managed to bypass brokers and various cartels that used to dominate the sector. But also, which is also equally true, as a result of this, we have also managed to catalyze local economies through the injection of 250 million shillings each week through these families into local economies across the country. Money in the hands of a family also restores dignity for it gives people the power to make economic choices in their local spaces and not depend on lining up waiting for food relief. And these choices, I strongly believe, catalyze and help us build the economy from the bottom up. Indeed, during these unprecedented times of coronavirus, we have to cushion our economy, and we must cushion our economy from below up, not from top down. The second recognition we have also made is the fact that our nation is largely youthful, with 70% of our population made up of young people. And whereas this gives us great hope, because a young population is indeed much more better equipped to fight coronavirus, but it is also worrying. Worrying because during a pandemic like the one we have, the sheer energy of our young population, as much as it will help us fight the virus, but we must also do everything we can to direct this energy so that it is not misdirected into misdeed. And this is why we must direct this youthful energy in a constructive manner. So therefore, as we fight this virus, as a government, we have started to harness the energy of our young people, engaging them in the national hygiene program that is more commonly now being referred to as Kazi Mutaani Initiative. Under this program, as a government, we expect to spend a total of 10 billion Kenya shillings engaging our youth in restoring public hygiene standards, in urban civil works, and other public undertakings. Currently, during the trial period, which we have been executing over the last few weeks, we have engaged a total of 26,000 young people. We now in, uh, intend, hopefully with the passage of the budget that we have put before Parliament, to increase that number to 200,000 young men and women across our country. And also to make it sustainable in the post-coronavirus period, we want to regiment these young people into livelihood guilds. And these are small groups of young people with a purpose and a passion for their country. Working with county governments, we will look forward to finding ways to look for generating work for these groups, societies and circles that hopefully these young people will form. We are making this endeavor through an urban renewal program to upgrade and to modernize our towns and cities. We want our towns and cities to be clean. We want our towns and cities to be green. Indeed, if Singapore can do it, there is no reason why Kenya can also not do it. This COVID pandemic, fellow Kenyans, is not only a health crisis, 
but it is also fundamentally an economic crisis. Jobs have been lost, businesses have had to close, and the economy is generally on a go slow. So therefore, to combat the effects of this downturn, my administration has had to take additional measures. Today, I am happy to announce the rolling out of my eight-point economic stimulus program, amounting to some 53.7 billion Kenya shillings. The injection of this money into the economy will stimulate growth and cushion families and companies as together we navigate our way out of the COVID-19 pandemic. The first element of this eight-point program will focus on infrastructure. Fellow Kenyans, I'm sure you're all aware of the damage that has been caused to our infrastructure as a result of the ongoing rains. And this has affected our country across the entire length of our borders. To address this challenge in the short term as a government, we intend to rehabilitate damaged access roads, footbridges, and other public infrastructure. We have set aside a total of 5 billion Kenya shillings to hire local labor, our local young men and women across the country to engage in this undertaking. We are convinced as a government that with the use of local labor and local construction materials in line with our Buy Kenya Build Kenya policy, we will be able to stimulate and support micro and small businesses across the country. The second element of our stimulus program will be about education. We know that parents and indeed our children across the country are concerned about what the future holds for them. But I want to assure you that in the very near future, we shall be communicating after the extensive discussions that are ongoing between parent teachers associations with our teachers with our school administrators we will be able to come out to you and tell you what plans and programs we have for our education sector to ensure that our children are able to carry on with their education but in the meantime in our current budget we have allocated an additional 6.5 billion shillings to the Ministry of Education. The purpose of this is to hire an additional 10,000 teachers and an additional 1,000 ICT interns to support our digital learning program. The program will also support the improvement of school infrastructure, including the addition, the, uh, the acquisition of an additional 250,000 desks across the country. And these desks will be made by our local artisans across the country. The aim of this particular objective is to get thousands of our graduates off the bench and off the street into action, while at the same time supporting our local artisans, our local builders, and their businesses. The third element of our program will target our small and medium enterprises. During this COVID pandemic, the liquidity of these enterprises has been adversely affected. The stimulus program that we are proposing will deal with this in two ways. First and foremost, we have allocated Kenya shillings 10 billion to fast-track payment of outstanding VAT refunds and other pending payments. I'm also happy to note that just yesterday, the National Treasury released about 30 billion Kenya shillings towards the payment of pending bills in the road sector. In addition to this, we will inject a further Kenya shillings 3 billion as seed capital for the SME credit guarantee scheme. The intention here being to provide affordable credit to our small 
and micro enterprises. And to do so, and to do so in an efficient and structured manner, borrowing from the professional standards and practices of the private sector credit arrangements. Health is our fourth target of our eight-point stimulus program. My administration intends to hire another 5,000 healthcare workers with diploma or certificate level qualification for a period of one year. This will not only enhance our COVID-19 response capability, but also enhance the implementation of the Universal Health Care Coverage Program. Further, the stimulus program will set aside a further 1.7 billion shillings for the expansion of bed capacity in our public hospitals. And here, I encourage our Ministry of Health to utilize our Juakali sector in this endeavor. Let us make and build these beds that we shall supply here locally so that that money circulates in and amongst our people. Similarly, resources will be pumped into our medical research facilities to enhance their research capacity, which is critical to generate new innovations in the medical field, new innovations that will not only help us combat COVID-19, but also other diseases and afflictions that may face our people now and into the future. But with the extra resources, these facilities will also undergo some level of reform to optimize their performance. So fellow Kenyans, you will be hearing of changes in the sector of research to ensure that those who are going to be charged with that responsibility and with the resources being given are up to the task of meeting the desire and objectives, not just of government, but of the people of Kenya. I am persuaded that these reforms will upscale our medical research facilities to a standard that can indeed rival any in the rest of the world. The fifth element of our stimulus program will focus on agriculture. My administration has prioritized Kenya Shillings 3 billion for the supply of farm inputs through e-vouchers, targeting some 200,000 small-scale farmers initially. This is meant to cushion farmers from the effects of adverse weather and to secure food supply chains in the post-COVID-19 period and into the future. Further, under this program, we also have allocated a further Kenya shillings 1.5 billion that will be set aside to assist our horticultural and, and uh, flower producers to continue accessing international markets in this period where we have a shortage of flights into and out of our country. These interventions will support the sustenance of farming communities and provide continued gainful employment for many thousands of workers in our breadbasket areas. Fellow Kenyans, tourism is our sixth target area. This sector is the one that has suffered most dramatically because of restricted movements and the termination, as I have just said, of international flights. To jumpstart this important sector and to protect its players from heavy financial losses, my administration will provide soft loans to hotels and related establishments through the Tourism Finance Corporation, and a total of Kenya shillings, two billion, will be set aside to support renovation of facilities and the restructuring of business operations by actors in this industry. In addition to this, funding will also be set aside to support the operations of our premier hospitality institution, which is Utali College, to guarantee the steady supply of well-trained hospitality professionals. The tourism component of the stimulus program will also engage 5,500 community scouts under the Kenya Wildlife Service 
at a cost of Kenya shillings 1 billion. Additionally, support will be made available to approximately 160 community conservancies at a cost of another 1 billion Kenya shillings. Fellow Kenyans, we want to green our country, and hence the seventh element of this stimulus concerns our environment. To mitigate the impact of deforestation and climate change, and to enhance the provision of water facilities, my administration will rehabilitate wells, water pans, underground water tanks in arid and semi-arid areas. And for this purpose, we have set aside Kenya shillings 850 million. A further 1 billion has also been set aside for flood control measures and another 540 million for our Greening Kenya campaign. Our eighth and final element of this stimulus program is of course manufacturing. As a strategy, we will now enforce with even more vigor the policy of buy Kenya, build Kenya. And to this end, my administration has set aside a further investment of Kenya shilling 600 million to purchase locally manufactured vehicles. And this is expected to sustain the operations of our local motor vehicle manufacturers and the intended, uh, attendant employment of workers. I want to also at this point also thank our National Assembly and Parliament as a whole for its incisive and speedy consideration and approval of the tax measures that my administration proposed to spur the economy by ensuring that employees have more of their earnings available to them to spend and to also reduce the corporate tax burden as an incentive to our business enterprises. I also therefore take this opportunity to once again urge Parliament to consider on a priority basis the budget proposals to anchor my eight-point economic stimulus program in order for us to be able to release this money to assist Kenyans who are in need. Finally, fellow Kenyans, the challenge of our moment now the challenge that has put us on a new road, the twists and turns of the road that we are on, we must continue to acknowledge our unknown. Unknown not only to us here in Kenya, but to the world at large. Every single country is struggling to find a way forward. I am comforted by one thing about Kenyans. Throughout our history, we are on record as a people who know how to do a good fight. And we have proven this over and over again. And I strongly believe that today, if we stay the course, we shall overcome the challenges just as we have done in the past. I urge all of us to remain true to our country, confident that the endurance that we are so famous for will ultimately drive us to victory. I take this early opportunity to wish all our Muslim brothers and sisters a happy Idul Fit. I wish you the best in this particular season and period. It is unfortunate that just like your Christian brothers and sisters we have had who had to also endure the holiest time in the Christian calendar which is Easter in difficult circumstances you are also having to endure the same but I believe through the strength of prayer through the unity of our people we shall succeed and we shall overcome. Thank you. Sitaki niongeze, nimesema yale ambaye tumesema. Yangu tu ni kusema ya kwamba vile nilisema wiki iliyopita 
ya kwamba tunajua ni wakenya wengi ambao wanaumia wakati huu mgumu wa covid lakini hatuna budi isipokuwa kuendelea kuhakikisha tumepambana na hii jangwa na vile niliwaambia wiki iliyopita mimi sina shaka wakenya tukishirikiana tuungane pamoja tutashinda huu ugonjwa lakini tena leo wakati natoa hii hotuba ambayo tumetoa sasa ya kusema lengo mbalimbali mbali ambayo serikali inachukua kurahisisha maisha ya wananchi wa kawaida na kuhakikisha ya kwamba wananchi bado wanaweza kuendelea na maisha yao kupitia hiyo stimulus package ambayo nimeitaja lazima tukumbuke ya kwamba jukumu ni letu sisi wote sisi kama serikali kama serikali zingine mataifa yote duniani imeanza kuona hatuwezi kuendelea kusema wakenya tukae nyumbani hatuwezi kuendelea kusema tu wakenya musiende biasharani zenu musiende makazi musiende namna hiyo lakini ile kitu ambaye itatusaidia kwa kikamilifu kuhakikisha ya kwamba tumeweza tena kufungua uchumi wetu na wananchi waweze kuendelea na maisha yao ya kawaida nimewaambia wenzangu hii haitakuwa kwa sababu ya yale serikali itatenda itakuwa kwa sababu ya yale kila mmoja wetu kwa kibinafsi atafanya wewe uko na jukumu ya kuhakikisha umechunga mwenzako tukianza kupanua na kufungua uchumi wetu wewe ujue ya kwamba usipotii masharti ambaye tumepatiwa sio wewe peke yako utaumia unaumiza pia mwenzako kwa kazi ambayo unafanya ukienda nyumbani umeumiza mama umeumiza mtoto kwa hivyo wakati umefika na nimeambia mawaziri wetu na haswa maofisa wetu wa afya waanze kuambia wakenya waanze kuwaeleza wakenya ya kwamba hatuwezi kuendelea na lockdown hatuwezi kuendelea maisha na, 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 na kafiu na tukifungua hii ugonjwa ukianza kuenea wakenya lazima mjue ya kwamba itaenea kwa sababu sisi wenyewe mimi uhuru matiangi wewe na ule mwingine hatujatimiza yale masharti ambayo tumepatiwa lakini tukiyatimiza wenzangu tutapona tukiyatimiza wenzangu we shall overcome tutashinda mimi sina shaka na hiyo na ndipo naendelea kusema hata wakati huu ambapo sasa tuatii masharti ya kafiu na yale mengine ambaye tumeweka kama serikali itafika wakati ambapo lazima kama nchi zingine tutafungua taifa letu na wakati wa kufungua jukumu sasa itarudi kwako itarudi kwangu kibinafsi kuhakikisha ya kwamba umejilinda umelinda wale unapenda na unalinda wale mnafanya kazi pamoja na wao kwa hivyo wenzangu hayo machache ambayo tumetaja ni yale ambayo tumeongezea kwa sababu shughuli za serikali za kikawaida na bajeti yetu yaendelea kawaida yale ambayo tumetangaza leo ni yale tumeongeza tu kwa sababu vile nimesema tumeweka bilioni kumi kusaidia wale ambao wameadhirika zaidi lakini msisahau wa Kenya bado kwa bajeti yetu tuko na ile bilioni 30 fatu billion ambayo bado iko kwa bajeti kumaanisha ya kwamba mwaka huu ambao ni mwaka wa kipekee kwa sababu ya huu ugonjwa sasa 
tuko na 40 billion ambayo tumeweka kama serikali kusaidia jamii ambayo zimeangamia zaidi. Kwa hivyo wenzangu tusaidiane. Tupendane. Tushirikiane. Tusaidiane. Tuhakikishe ya kwamba tumeshinda hii jangwa na Kenya yetu na wa Kenya wamefaulu. Kwa hayo machache nasema Mungu waendelee kuwabariki. Mungu waendelee kubariki taifa letu la Kenya kwa wenzetu wa Islamu. Tuasema Idul Fitr. Mungu waendelee kuwalinda na kuwaongoza. Najua kwa wengi wenu hii ni wakati wa sherehe. Lakini kama Wakristo wenzenu wa Kenya wenzenu ambao ni Wakristo hata hawa wakati ya ista muliona tukisherehekea ista kipindi kitakatifu kabisa katika kalenda ya wakristiano lakini tulisherehekea kila mtu kwake kwa sababu ya hii ugonjwa jameni tushirikiane Mungu ni moja Mungu atupenda zote na mimi naamini pahali popote tulipo hata kama hatutakuwa na wenzetu tuwapenda tuendelee kumshukuru Mungu kwa yale ametutendea na kuendelea kumuomba atuondolee shida na jangwa ambazo za kumba nchi yetu na dunia yetu kwa jumla. Asanteni sana na Mungu awabariki. Asanteni.